Today in a BFH garage, this 2015 Rubicon JK is about ready to get a little bit of love. In the form of a metal cloak, three and a half inch game changer suspension. What do you say we get this unboxed, take a look and see what we got. Man, that's a lot of work. All right, so we have our springs front and rear, all control arms, shock mounts, bump stop, pucks, track bar mount, we have a sway bar links, exhaust kit, shocks, two track bars, a couple sets of extended brake lines, a crap ton of stickers. Not to mention a crap ton of garbage that I have to put out tomorrow. Okay, as we get started, something to note. The kit comes with the front shock, um, I believe they call it an outboard bracket. And while these are good, they cannot be used with um, your stock wheels. And that is because the back spacing on your stock wheels is six inches. And in order to use these brackets, you need to have wheels with four inches or less of back spacing. So if you're going to be installing this kit on your JK, make sure you understand that this cannot be used with the stock wheels or you will have some interference issues. If this is your first time installing a lift kit, I strongly, strongly recommend printing off the instructions and reading them thoroughly before you even start. And a prime example is on the sway bar links. If you notice, the front ones have a longer bolt, the rear ones have a shorter bolt. And if you look at it here, they look the same. So that'd be something easy to miss. Let me show you what they're talking about. So you pull these links apart here. So the front ones are there, the rear ones are there, and you can see the difference in the length of the bolt. So you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to your instructions so you don't have to go back and undo something only to redo it. All right, so we need to pull these um, sway bar links off first, but prior to doing that, we need to loosen up this bolt on our brake line to make sure that when that axle droops, it's not going to be pulling the brake line down. And you're gonna notice that you have your ABS sensor wires here and then you have clips that hold everything together. So carefully take those clips off so when you undo this bolt, this thing can uh, droop naturally. And what I would do too is just uh, remove the uh, ABS sensor wire from there so that way it's separate. All right, next let's get off those sway bar links. All right, next steps, take off the track bar. And this bolt right here, sometimes a pain in the butt to get off. So there's a reason I call this the BFH garage. In order to get this started, I'll take and hold my wrench on, take a big hammer and pop until I can just get that bolt started. Just like that. Now it'll come off the rest of the way. Now the nice thing is on the back side here, there's a flag nut, so you don't have to get a backing wrench on there. You see this flag nut pop up. A little bit of axle shift, which is normal because the track bar is what holds it centered in place.
Okay, a word of caution here. They want you to now um, loosen up the top shock nut, which will allow the axle to droop, but you have to understand that once you undo these shocks, there's nothing there that's holding this axle up and it'll come slamming down. So if you're on the ground, make sure you have some jack, uh, uh, not jack stands, but a floor jack under there to hold your axle up. Or if you're on a lift like me, make sure you have your, um, your jack stands there, which hold the axle in place. Now, once I get those nuts removed, then I can pull the shocks out and then I can slowly release the axle so I can watch brake lines and everything else. The last thing you wanna uh, see is have everything come tumbling down and either get yourself hurt or break things. So this will be my first rust issue. If you look up top, you're gonna to see the shock stem has rust all over it. So I'm gonna take some PB blaster, let that sit for just a little bit and then I'll come back and uh, get it. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. You have your stem nut up top and then you need to back it with the wrench right there. With the upper stems off, come down, get the lowers, you'll have to back it or it'll sit there and spin. This might be another good spot for some uh, PV blaster, but if it's not too bad, you'll be fine. Okay, now's the time to take out the spring. So if you're on the ground with a floor jack, you can just slowly lower your, your uh, axle until the springs start to come loose. You have to understand these are still under tension and that's why this is so dangerous if you don't have everything all set up. So in my case here, I'll just start to lower my jack stands and eventually all the pressure comes off the springs and we'll pull them out. You know one thing I wanted to um, uh, verify with you too, before you start drooping your axle, Understand that we've undone the bracket up here, but this still feels pretty tight to me. And if you notice on the JKs, they have a uh, bolt on both sides to hold this bracket in, which also holds the brake line. So I'm gonna pull those off and pull the brake line out this way so that way we can get full droop without stressing those uh, brake components. And then just as a reminder, once you get uh, these things loose, anytime you loosen something, put a bolt back where it goes so you don't lose it. And you can see how that's gonna relieve all the stress on that. And on the inside, I thought there's a bolt, there's just a little tab there, I forgot about that. So um, one bolt, 10 millimeter on this side, the other side's a tab, it pulls straight out, and then uh, you gotta pull out board to get it to come out. So one thing not mentioned in the instructions, but I always pay attention to, especially on the newer stuff because they have all the electronics and everything, is that you have electronic lines going everywhere. So my brake lines here are loose and those aren't electronic, well, part of it is. But over here, you have a, uh, a line that's attached to the upper control arm. We need to disconnect that because it's starting to get a little bit of tension, I noticed that, so I'm gonna pull that out so we don't do any damage. And then I will check everything else too. For example, you have a breather hose here. The breather hose still feels good, so I'm not worried about that. But definitely this line I'm gonna undo just to be safe. Okay, something not noted in the directions. So as I'm continuing to lower this, um, first of all, the breather line did start to get snug and it's just held by two clips. So I just went ahead and uh, released the pressure on that. And now that I've lowered it, I can get the stock springs out, but it's not low enough to get the new springs in. I can tell you that right now. The one thing that's not in the directions that needs to be there and you need to do is disconnect your front drive shaft because as it goes to droop, it pushes the drive shaft back. And what'll happen is it'll, it'll bottom out and you won't be able to get any more droop out of there. So it's four simple bolts. 
get the front drive shaft disconnected and then life will be a lot easier. So I was showing you guys about the drive shaft. Another problem that became predictable is your, your locker um, electronics here. So when it's down here, you can see that if the suspension droops much further, it's gonna put stress on this again. So not only do you need to disconnect it from the control arm here, which that's gonna have to come off anyway, but go ahead and disconnect from here so you're not adding all that stress. And now you see how much play we have on the line. I'm not worried about breaking anything. Just remember the orientation when you go to put your upper control arm back in that it needs to, that the line needs to come underneath the control arm. When you go to take the drive shaft out, you're gonna have to put it in four wheel drive, rotate the uh, drive shaft so you can access the bolts. You'll get two of them at a time. These are Loctited in there, so they're a little more difficult to get out. Not bad. Once you get the bolts out, just get a light tap on the side of the yoke. And then it comes out. Okay, as you start coming through this, we get to the brake lines. Now, we've already undone the bracket up here. Next, we'll have to undo the brake line here. And the thing you need to be aware of is that brake fluid's going to come running out. And if you've never dealt with brake fluid, it's just a mess. So make sure below... You have a trash can or a bucket or something to catch up brake fluid. The bracket that I had to pull off the axle housing, that's attached to the brake line, and that's all going away anyway because we have the extended brake lines. So what we need to do next is disconnect all of our ABS uh, electronics from the main brake line. Then we can pull that brake line off, get the new one installed. So with this kit, prior to um, breaking this brake line apart, I attach the bracket to the frame, and then that way I can just take my uh, new brake line, put it up between, get the clip on there, break this part, and immediately attach it to that so I have less of a mess. Yes, it's going to come out down the bottom side, but I'll have a little bit of time to, uh, to work with that prior to getting that, so I'll do that next. All right, so once you have your brake line all established, everything's the way you want it, we have to go through and we're gonna zip tie the ABS line back to the brake line. All right, next up we need to measure our control arms, get them to the starting point length. And in the uh, metal cloak directions, you'll see up here where it gives you all of your uh, lengths that you need to be uh, setting these at. So um, one thing that you need to pay attention to is on this uh, front lower control arm, this joint right here is offset. So when you measure, it has to be, well, you want it to be even with the other side. So if you look at it right now, it's on an arc because that joint's upside down. So you take and you turn that joint over. Now both holes are on the same plane. And uh, at that point you could you can make your measurements. So just make sure you're paying attention that that joint's in the correct orientation. All right, it's time to get the control arms out. Um, again, remember the routing of your wiring that you have there. Um, break free your nut uh, if you need to, and then you can get everything else apart. A word of caution on the axle here. Do your uppers first, because you can rotate the uh, pinion a little bit to get the uppers installed without losing the uh, without losing the axle going all over the place. So get the uppers done, then you can do, uh, do your lowers. Now be careful too, when you go to pull this out, your axle is going to want to move one way or the other if you're not careful. So just keep that in mind as you're, as you're doing that. So I'll pull this partially out, get it right about there, and then I'll uh, get my arms ready. When you go to take your uppers off, the inside is a flag nut. So you need to first remove this little insulating piece here 
and then you could access the bolt from there and pull it back out. Okay, so now we're gonna get the upper control arm mounted here. The one thing you gotta make sure that you're careful of is that when you uh, um, adjusted these, they'll still move a little bit. So I like to tighten the jam nut hand tight because once you get it in here, it's still easy to move it around. So just be real careful when you're putting everything back together that you're not moving stuff around on accident. Make sure you got your flag nut oriented the right way. And then I'll run that up there. And now I need to move the axle until I get that hole to line up. Again, that's our starting point. And we'll get that dialed in a little bit. And then same thing on the other side. And I'll see if I can keep my fat head out of it. All right. And again, orientation up here. You want to make sure that it's the same as when you took it off. So I know we need to be on the inside of that wire. Time to get the lowers. Okay, so before we put springs or anything back in, we need to make our uh, bump stop extension holes. So the factory spring perch right here, um, according, to the, according to the design of the factory, this was all the bump stop you need. But now that we're adding our um, uh, lifted uh, suspension, we need to add bump stops to make sure things don't go crashing into each other. So you wanna make sure this thing is centered about as good as you can and then what I do is I take a scribe and then I will punch the center of that mark. I start by drilling a smaller pilot hole first.
Okay, the metal cloak kit gives you plenty of options for bump stop extension. Um, if you are a hardcore off-roader and you like to get every eighth of an inch out of your uh, travel, then this is probably not the kit for you. However, uh, you know, Metal Cloak designed this uh, um, with the standard kit in mind and they have it dialed in pretty good. So you can add bump stop to the front anywhere from one to four inches. They give you different size bolts to uh, do that. You have a top plate. So for example, with the stock fenders on the JK that I'm working on right now, it would require three inches of bump stop. So I'll put this together like this, and then it goes into that hole I just drilled, and then this comes in from the bottom side and it tightens it down. Now, a word of uh, warning there, you want this thing good and snug, but you don't want to crank it down because over time, anything that's rubber like these pucks here will tend to, to split. You want to make sure it's snug, but you don't want to crank it down beyond its uh, ability to stay together. So we give you plenty of options here. Figure out what's going to work for you and go forward. All right, um, I'm going to put springs in now. And when you do a lift, it can be tough sometimes to get the, the springs in there, especially anything that's a uh, dual rate or progressive rate springs where they have all the tightly wound coils. You can't get a spring compressor on there and it makes it difficult. So what I always do is I just droop my axle um, as much as I need to get the springs in and then when you jack it back up, it compresses the springs and usually good to go. I'm kind of limited today because I have my uh, jack stands here and they're only gonna let me go down so far. So I'm gonna see if this works and uh, get these installed. Yeah, it's gonna be close. There we go. Yeah, so that's kind of a pain in the butt. Now, the one thing you want to make sure you do too is get your pigtail of your spring on this index here. So you want to make sure it's lined up so that way the spring won't rotate any more than, uh, than uh, when you're on the trail. So that's all there is to that. I'll do the other side and then we'll uh, get the bump stop pucks in. Okay, before we get the rest of it, I'm going to uh, open up these shocks. And uh, we'll get these shocks installed. Comes with all the hardware you need. Pay attention to how your, your components go together. Looks like they have that pretty well to go underneath. This goes on top. Then yada, then that. So we'll get these installed and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, shock install is pretty straightforward. You can see where you have this rubber piece with the, with the sandwich washers around it. Make sure you bring your shock in. Leave your brake line on the backside. You're gonna put that up through the uh, shock tower hole up top. You're gonna put on your other rubber isolator. Then you're gonna put on your uh, Washer, the bevel side goes down. Then you have another regular washer. And then you have a nylock nut. And this nut, at least in this kit, is a 17 millimeter. Okay, here's where I think a lot of people make a mistake um, in the sense that they don't check their travel. So you have to cycle your suspension with the springs out. So that means I had to install the shocks, get the bolts in there, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower it down to the ground so I can use my floor jacks to raise this thing up to full bump and verify the amount of bump stop that I need. Um, the metal cloak instructions just kind of give you a, a flat number I'm gonna actually determine the exact amount we need to make sure they have enough bump stop extension in there so we don't have things breaking, i.e. over compressing your shocks or things like that. So we'll get it down towards the ground and we'll get that stuff checked out. All right, now that I'm under the floor jacks, I need to take the axle up to full bump.
Okay, and I'll get this on one side. Okay, now with the axle at full bump, I can measure for my shocks. Wow, that's pretty good actually. Two. So pay attention here. Remember how I had to disconnect this because it was going to be uh, really tight. Well, here's the problem. We're at full droop right now. Shocks are in, so this is the down travel, and this still won't reach that. So you need to be uh, cognizant of what you're doing here. These are just held in by these little uh, body type clips. You can pop those up, and now you can see that uh, it'll get in there and fit. Um, I'm probably going to cut this tie, and I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit just so it has plenty of room for the flex. You don't want to be out on the trail to find your four-wheel drive goes out because you didn't pay attention to the way your um, connectors went. All right, let's get the bump stops in. Or I should say bump stop extension. So in the instructions, they tell you to have this thing already put together, have it in the spring when you're putting the spring in. It always gets in the way and it's always a pain in the butt. I just take them and I put them in one at a time like that and it's not so difficult. And then, I take my little uh, bolt and the uh, top plate, get that in there, and you just gotta kinda start fishing it down through to the bottom. And you can raise up, see your holes at. Boom, there it is. Um, so there's a nylock nut here that goes on the bottom side, so I'll have to get a ratch to hold that. And then the top side's held by an Allen wrench. So you do that, you tighten it up. Again, like I said, make it snug, but don't over tighten it to where you're going to cause the pucks to prematurely fail. Pretty straightforward. Okay, time to install the track bar. Now, when you install the track bar here, the fixed end goes to the frame side, the adjustable end goes to the axle side. Now you won't be able to know what your adjustment's gonna be until we get the weight of the vehicle on the ground. So the weight of the vehicle is on the springs, everything is where it needs to be. Then I can check for center to make sure that axle's perfectly centered. And when it's centered, I'll adjust this out until it can drop right in and the bolt pushes right through. You shouldn't have to fight it. Now you may need to use something to pull your axle one way or the other, but you shouldn't have to fight the bolt going in. So I want to say fairly straightforward, but this does give people some uh, some grief along the way. And uh, I just want to make sure you understand why that is. So uh, go frame side first, get everything finger tight. And then down here at the axle side, it's not even close right now. And that's because when the axle droops, it can move left or right. So we don't have a measurement on that, on that yet, so I'm not even going to try to adjust it. I'm gonna wait until we get the uh, weight of the vehicle on the ground, and then we will adjust that, get everything uh, put back together. Once it's on the uh, um, weight of the tires, the, everything's on the weight of the springs, then I'll go through and I will torque everything down to spec. You wanna do that at right height for most everything. Um, there, there's some other type of uh, control arm stuff out there that can be done in any position, but Metal Cloak uh, prefers to have theirs uh, done at right height. That's where the suspension is centered. It makes sense. And then uh, it'll be all done. Now also understand that when you are completely done with the suspension, because we altered the height, your uh, alignment's gonna be off. So you need to take that in and get it in line um, and uh, they can um, take care of all that there. So um, I'm done with the front with a couple of minor uh, cleanup things. I gotta get my breather tube put back up and then we're gonna move on to the back. Bad habit of saying that I'm always done with something when I'm not. So one of the things uh, that you're gonna run into as a problem when you install this lift 
is going to be the exhaust right here. So you can see the relationship of the drive shaft. That's as low as the drive shaft. Let me back up. That's as low as the drive shaft wants to go right now. And that's because that exhaust right here is in the way. That is why they give you the exhaust spacer kit, which goes right here. So you space it down and it drops the exhaust down, pushes it back just a little bit. And that will allow your drive shaft uh, to clear that so it can be reconnected. There is on occasion, I've had them before, where they've had to go, uh, go in and get um, some exhaust work done in an exhaust shop to make sure that everything cleared. But we got to do that. And that's always a pain in my butt. So I guess I'll get after it. So usually these exhaust bolts are rusted. Sometimes you have to cut them off. Looking at those, I guess we'll see. Actually, they're gonna move. Hopefully they go the whole way without breaking. How about that? Never happens. Wow. Better buy a lottery ticket. This one right here is a pain in the butt to get to. And uh, you will fight this. You're not gonna like it. I don't like it. In fact, I might even stop doing JK suspension builds because I hate this stuff. Okay, maybe not, but it certainly sucks. All right, so you have two exhaust spacers you have to get in. One is on the passenger side over here and the pain in the butt one is on the driver's side up there. Um, I don't have the bolts tightened down yet, but I fought this thing for a while. You're not gonna like it when you have to do it, but it is gonna be required. So your drive shaft here doesn't uh, uh, hang up on your exhaust when you're at full droop. So anyway, exhaust spacer is just about done and they are a pain. And of course I said I was done with everything in the front and I forgot I still have to add my sway bar links as well. Um, that'll be easy though, and uh, we'll just keep moving forward. What a long day. All right, I'm not ahead of myself anymore. It's time for sway bar links. <laughs> 